Who doesn't love a classic car made from only the most exemplary set of automobile parts and is crafted specifically to the preference of the potential owners? Now, owning these cars only means one thing, you're massively wealthy. Because these three cars that we're about to reveal are the top three most expensive cars in the world. Top one is the Ferrari 250 GTO. Instead of a stallion on the logo, the 250 GTO is the ultimate grail of classic automobiles. Given its unique and lovely nature, this Ferrari ought to have a unicorn. Although $48.4 million for a car may seem like a lot of money, this is no ordinary vehicle. Few people were surprised when in the summer of 2018, a beautiful 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO set the record for the most expensive car ever sold at an auction. This particular Ferrari, the third 250 GTO produced by the Italian car maker, is identified by the chassis number 3413 GT. This cherry red beauty is swift and highly powerful, and certainly lives up to its name. The potent V12 engine makes it simple to reach speeds of 280 km per hour. Greg Whitten, a former executive at Microsoft, purchased the vehicle in 2000 for just $10 million. An excellent return on investment, that. Surprisingly, this prancing horse sold for less than the auctioneers had predicted. Sotheby's opened the bidding at $35 million and projected a high price of $45 million. But when the gavel fell, it went for $44 million plus a commission fee of $4.4 million. Although the name of the mystery buyer is still unknown, we can assume that when this Ferrari GTO 250 is resold, the buyer will earn handsomely. It might be valued at more than $100 million in the future. Only 36 Ferrari 250 GTOs were ever produced, and remarkably, most of them are still in running order, even those who spent numerous days on the racetrack. A brand new Ferrari 250 GTO cost just $18,000 in 1962, equivalent to nearly $153,000 when adjusted for inflation. The 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO was a champion in its day. It was owned by legendary Ferrari collector Eduardo Lualdi Tabardi and won 9 races in 1962. Additionally, it took first place in its class at the 63 and 64 Targa Florio endurance races in Sicily, Italy, and from 1962 through 1965 earned 15 ranks and overall victories. When Witten owned the vehicle, he kept it active by participating in several vintage racing series and four famous GTO anniversary tours. As a result, many Ferrari 250 GTOs have been sold at auction and have all fetched astounding sums of money. Craig McCabe, the inventor of the cell phone, purchased a 1962 250 GTO for an estimated $35 million at a private sale in 2012. The vehicle which once belonged to racing icon Sterling Moss was painted lime green in August 2014 to honor the UDT Lace Doll race team. A 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO bought in $38.1 million at the annual Quail Lodge auction. Carlos Monteverde the wealthy philanthropist Lily Safra's son purchased the vehicle. Although it set a record then, other Ferraris have since fetched higher prices. In 2018, WeatherTech founder and CEO David McNeil reportedly paid $70 million for a 1963 Ferrari 250 GTO that won the Tour de France. Owning a Ferrari GTO 250 entitles you to membership in a highly elite group since the car with chassis number 4153 GT is considered the priciest car in the world. The owner's 250 GT Tour is hosted in several posh locations throughout Europe. Pink Floyd, Ralph Lauren, musician Nick Mason, and British businessman Lord Anthony Bamford all own Ferrari 250 GTOs each year. Bamford actually owns two of them. Top 2 is the Duesenberg Short Supercharged J. It's not surprising that this car, considered Hollywood royalty, once fetched $22 million at auction in the summer of 2018. It exceeded the anticipated sale price of $10 million and became the most valuable free World War II automobile ever to be sold in an auction. Only two SSJs were ever produced, and both were given to cinema stars from the Golden Age. One was presented to Clark Gable, star of Gone with the Wind, while the other was given to Gary Cooper, star of High Noon. According to reports, Duesenberg gave the cards as short-term presents to increase awareness of the automobile company. The cars were given to the leading men to drive for six months. And Cooper was so taken with the SSJ that he decided to buy it when the loan time was up. He spent $5,000 on the SSJ, and soon after, Duesenberg became more well-known in Hollywood. Despite not owning the SSJ model, Greta Garbo, Marion Davies, and Clara Bow drove Duesenbergs. 
given that he already owned a couple of Duesenbergs in his collection, Gable declined to buy his loaner. Cooper's SSJ was the one that fetched $22 million at auction, and the car's exceptional provenance contributed to its high price. Cooper wasn't the only well-known person to possess this SSJ. Briggs Cunningham, the winner of America's Cup and a race car driver at Le Mans, previously owned it. The SSJ was purchased by Cunningham in 1949 and is now preserved at the Cunningham Automotive Museum in Costa Mesa, California. Cunningham apparently reached a speed of 126.6 miles per hour in the Duesenberg at the Murdoch Dry Lake, and being the speed maniac that he was, he couldn't just let it accumulate dust. It'd be fun to drive this vintage supercar through the Mojave Desert and let her loose. The SSJ is a remarkable example of automotive history. Since it's primarily a luxury supercar, imagine a mix between a Bugatti and a Rolls Royce. There isn't exactly a contemporary equivalent. Cooper's 1935 Duesenberg SSJ's exceptional 400 horsepower supercharged straight 8 engine with quadruple overhead cams allows it to travel at 140 miles per hour. The Duesenberg that Cooper's SSJ sold for a high price at an auction in 2011 is not the only one. At a Pebble Beach sale, a 1931 Duesenberg Model J known as the Whittle Coupe sold for $10.3 million. While the Duesenberg car manufacturer no longer exists, it played a significant role in the history of automobile and is highly sought after by car enthusiasts worldwide. In St. Paul, Minnesota in 1913, brothers August and Frederick Duesenberg experienced a dream. The brothers started producing the first Duesenberg vehicles in 1920 and from 1921 to 1937 which would make them famous around the world. They also started building race cars and engines. Duesenbergs were made in Indianapolis, Indiana. Because they were so opulent, they were frequently referred to as the kings of the American road. The average cost of a Duesenberg in the 1920s was over $8,500 which when adjusted for inflation, is equivalent to nearly $110,000 now. Duesenbergs were also highly successful in racing. In 1924, 1925, and 1927, Duesenberg racing vehicles won the Indianapolis 500. Four of the last seven years of that decade saw them come in second or third. For the first time, Peter DePaolo drove a Duesenberg to victory in the 1925 Indianapolis 500. Duesenbergs were well liked by both men and women, and the company was ahead of its time regarding equal rights. Women frequently worked in the Duesenberg factories, examining parts before being put on the assembly line. The race was won in under 5 hours. Sadly, the Great Depression significantly impacted the business and even Hollywood couldn't save Duesenberg. Hollywood's wealthy obsessed over Duesenberg once more with the SSJ, but the standard public did not, and the corporation couldn't be preserved. The top 3 is the McLaren F1, the most astounding automobile ever constructed possibly. It has a strong racing history and is sleek and fashionable. It was one of Elon Musk's earliest supercar purchases for his collection. He acquired one in 1999 when he was still a budding businessman in Silicon Valley. He was just about to launch PayPal and wasn't even a billionaire yet. He was happy to obtain a sports automobile for $1 million and referred to the vehicle as a creature's comfort. The third most expensive vehicle sold in an auction was a 1994 McLaren F1, which sold the Sotheby's option last year for $19.8 million. This McLaren is unique because Elon Musk did not entirely pay $19.8 million for it. The 1994 McLaren F1 is one of just two examples of the model modified after production to fulfill LM regulations. In other words, these McLarens were altered to comply with the Le Mans racing requirements. The second modified McLaren, a 1998 model, fetched $13.7 million at an auction in 2015. With a free 680 horsepower GTR racing engine and an additional extra high downforce package, this supercar can reach a top speed of 225 miles per hour and turn on a dime at that speed. If you desire power and speed, this supercar has you covered. It's no surprise that McLaren has won the 1995 24 Hours of Le Mans given the ongoing changes. The 1994 McLaren F1 took two full years for McLaren production workers to complete. To increase the car's aerodynamic efficiency, they installed a brand new racing steering wheel, updated the exhaust system, and equipped it with 18-inch wheels. Thanks to its racing seats and cream leather inside, the 1994 McLaren F1 looks just as fantastic inside as it does outside. Three passengers may fit inside, with the driver occupying the middle seat. The 1994 McLaren was resprayed in shiny silver to make the supercar stand out, and although it is an exceedingly strange configuration, it ultimately works. Surprisingly, this McLaren sold less than the auctioneers had predicted. 
They had estimated that the car would bring in $23 million at the auction, but it just fell shy of that estimate. Only 64 road-going McLaren F1s were ever produced. The majority of McLarens were only made race cars. Since you can actually drive a McLaren race vehicle on the road and LM specification, McLaren is rather unique. A 1995 McLaren F1 sold for $15.62 million at an auction in 2017. McLarens frequently sell for extravagant amounts. The 37th Formula 1 car constructed, the $15.62 million McLaren, was also the first F1 vehicle imported into the United States. A 90s era McLaren F1 had a manufacturer's suggested retail price of roughly $975,000. But today, most of these cars fetch well over $10 million. Gordon Murray is creating a successor to the McLaren F1 for the Formula 1 racing series. The recently released T50 is a three-seat hypercar that will retail for roughly $3.2 million. It's regarded as McLaren's F1 spiritual successor as Murray designed it. And that completes our list of the top three most expensive cars ever bought in an auction. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. See you in our next video.